Hello, I'm Karen and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how to make these beautiful little um, slippers for the newborn there and also what I'm going to do is share with you how to turn them into booties with these stripes so that you can do them in your football team colours so we've got like Christmas and football going off at the same time which we do anyway because we've got the World Cup going off okay so what I'm going to do is put those to one side and I'm going to use um, this sort of uh, turquoisey blue yarn using a four millimeter crochet hook and I am using my Converse slippers soles which I haven't done for such a long time so if you have watched the Converse slippers skip ahead to about seven minutes because I'm going to share just in case those people that haven't watched it um, and then you don't slip stitch to join after the second round so you're going to do the first two rounds of that one okay um, and you need to make two soles and you don't and right so um, we're going to do it, begin with a chain of 12 so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve this is also going to be a two-part video just so that you know okay um right so um, into the second chain from the hook we're going to work three single crochet if you're in the um, US or it's three double crochet if you're in the UK we're going to continue with the same stitch and we're working that into the next into three chains so that's one two and three now we're going to go up a stitch, so we're going up to the half double if you're in the US or it's the half treble if you're in the UK and we also work into three chains, so that's two and three oops, I don't think I go through properly then we're going up to the next size stitch which is a double crochet if you're in the US or it's a treble crochet if you're in the UK and we're also working three of those, so I've done one oops and two three and in the very end chain we're going to work eight of the same stitch so that's one two i hope you can see all right <laughs> three four I'm just going to just tuck the tail end under it five if I can do it there we go some things don't change <laughs> five um six seven and eight we're going to continue with the same stitch we're going underneath one strand and um, if you can on the way back so the first one is right just there and we're working into the same stitch so it's the double or the treble depending where you're from so that's one two oh dear three then we're going to drop down to the half double or the half treble so that's one two three and then drop back down to the original stitch we started with which is the single crochet if you're in the US or the double crochet if you're in the UK and we did three of those and then at the end of the round we've got this little sort of twisted bit and behind there is a little loop i called it the hidden loop or the, where the hidden stitch is and we're working two stitches of the into that stitch there then we're going to slip stitch to join so that's the end of round one and i'm just going to pull my tail in tight there <clears throat> Now for round two we need to chain one and then we're going to work into the next stitch along now go into the one where you've just done the slip stitch and we're going to work two of the we're working it's the half double crochet if you're in the US or it's the half treble if you're in the UK now we need we're working the same stitch all the way around so we're going to do the same stitch into the next ten stitches so that's one two three four four 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now we're going to wear two stitches in the next eight stitches, so we have a total of sixteen as we go around this corner. Okay, so that's um so that's two, it's not really a corner. <laughs> you know what I mean. Um we've already done two, so this is four. <clears throat> six eight ten twelve fourteen <coughs> <clears throat> excuse me and 16 and now we're going to work um, into the next 10 stitches so that's one two three four five six Seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then we're going to work two of these stitches into the next two stitches. And the last stitch is actually the slip stitch from the previous round. And you will be working in that um, for the majority of this pattern from now onwards. So you get to the end. Um, like I said, you don't slip stitch to join. So what you're going to do is, um, I'm going to be changing colours so you can see what happens. Okay, so I've already got one that I made earlier, as I do like to do those kind of things. <laughs> um, and this tail end, what I'm going to do, usually you'd say you'd like to sew it in, um, but I'm just going to just cut it off because I'm going to cut it, tuck it in as I go around. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your, oop, I've lost the loop. Get your two pieces and put both of your loops onto your hook um, and then get your tail ends um, so that you can pull those so that they're nice and tight. And we'll change over to white yarn so you can see the, the difference of the colour. So what you're going to do is, oops, put that out of the way. You want to slip stitch, that might be better to actually have that tail end the other side. Hang on a minute. Let's get more comfortable there. Um, <laughs> I've got myself in a ravel. Right, okay. So then you're going to what you're going to do is you're going to put your hook into the first stitch of the round that you've just been working on on in the front one and also into the back there. She says I can't get underneath two strands. Oh no, it's still not done it right. Okay, I don't know how many times I've done this pattern. All right, so we're going to slip stitch to join. So you just put that, pull that through and pull through both of the loops that was already on your hook. And you can pull these tail ends tight. For this round, so this is round three. Um, so what you're going to do is you're just going to work straight into the next stitch along in the front and in the back and we're going to join them together with the um, single crochet if you're in the US or the um, double crochet if you're in the UK and um, if you want to skip ahead um, to be able to get to the next stage so you can see that obviously you can do that um, and but you should have 42 stitches when you've got round to the other side and you will use the um, slip stitch or the very last stitch because that slip stitch there is still going to be the same colour so you'll be able to see the difference when you actually get round to the other side um, I'm obviously not counting at this moment in time because I'm telling you what to do but I will I will count the stitches just so that you know that there is a total of 42 Oops. 
um, and I thought that today I would just be able to tell you um, a little story. I haven't told a story, I haven't done any stories for ages. So today's story is going to be um, a combination story of silk and crochet. <laughs> so, um, so as um, if you've been watching my videos and you've not just watched the Converse slippers, you will know that I was trying to search for the origins of crochet as a theme of a thing that I was doing. I found some old um, patent cases and um, followed my little trails of things thinking that it was all to do with that to do with patenting and everything in the 1800s. We know that Mademoiselle Rigo de la Branchandier didn't invent crochet um, so um, and we found that there was patterns that was actually older than the ones that she was saying that when she actually invented it. But, um, so I got to that point and then I say I carried on following. I was following the languages and trying to work out and like just different things. I found an old hook in Egypt um, that was in the museum, in the British Museum. There's now a photo of that on, the, um, on their website. And um, then, say, I came across what... So I got to a, a place in China called Jiahu and there I that's where I was looking at the ancient symbols that's on some tortoises on some tortoise shells <laughs> and um, so I personally believe that I could see that there was a, a code in there and I actually demonstrated that I could actually crochet up the symbols and that they actually do crochet up the granny square, which I have done a video of that. Um, and so technically that was the oldest written um, granny square pattern that I was able to find. Um, but also at that site, because they've because they keep doing um, archaeological digs and things like that, they also showed at that site there was evidence that there was silk there and there was things to be able to make looms and flutes and there was um, a lot more advanced in technology than I suppose we was believing at that time because we're talking about like 8,000 plus years ago. That stitch didn't feel right, sorry. Um, and I'm also getting towards the end of my round so um, what I'll do is I'll get towards the end and we'll count the stitches and then I can carry on telling you some more about the um, ancient site at Jiahu. There. As you get round to this corner, it does start to bend over a little bit, so it is a little bit more fiddly. But just make sure that you're marrying up all of your stitches. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this stitch here and match that up to the one at the back, because this next one is always the worst one, I suppose. Right, so I'm just going to just double check. So I've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one. And so this very last stitch here is where you'd actually do you'd you did your slip stitch. We just need to go through to the back. The back is looking strange. If you obviously when you work working it, you'll see. So you can just go into the back, try and get hold of a, a piece of it somewhere. That's going to be the inside of the slipper, so it's not too bad. And then you're going to slip stitch into the very first single crochet or double crochet to join. Okay, <clears throat> and so it'll look like that on that side and that on that side. At this point, realistically, it is easier to be sewing in this, or you can actually pull that through to the other side to sew it when you've done. Um, but you can see I've made like a, quite a big stitch there with that one, but never mind. Um, I'm going to just keep on moving. So this next round, which um, I can't remember which round this is now, I think it's round four. We're going to chain one, and we're using what I'm calling a special stitch. So you yarn over, go into the stitch you've already just slip stitched into, Catch your yarn, pull through, so you've got three on the hook. Put your hook straight into the next stitch along. Yarn over again, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through three. 
and that looks like that so it's a bit like doing um like a half double crochet or a double crochet two together but now you're going to work into the stitch you've already worked yarn over pull through and then put your hook into the next stitch along yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through three and we're going to do that all the way around and you will still end up with 42 stitches and what will happen is your work will tip inwards um, so it will look a little bit like the converse slippers but the opposite way around um, but uh, yeah so anyway where had I got to so yeah so it was in China in Jiahu with the ancient symbols which I believe um, is a code for crochet and crochets up the granny square um, and also I say at that site there is um, evidence that they was actually producing silk and then those those people leave that site they they then move they don't know exactly where those people went but if you look um, at the next neolithic kind of site that is northwest and it just happens that some of the bodies that was buried in Jiahu was also facing northwest anywho back to the code <laughs> so while i was actually doing my research for the code saying i was convinced it was something to do with um black patents and the royal family and that they was also that they'd been keeping crochet a secret a bit like the chinese had done with um silk but i do know with the silk that um yeah if you if you shared the secret way back then apparently um so they say that that would the punishment was death which was um why it was kept for thousands of thousands of years as a secret and um but yeah so anyway so i did i actually decided i was going to write to the queen <laughs> and ask the queen i know um she never actually wrote back but the thing was is that um i did write to her so that she you know she knew that i was asking if like basically did she know anything about it and um and nothing ever happened and so for years and years I just I was like okay then um, I just carried on doing my research and I showed how we can crochet up different words with crochet and basically I was putting it all to bed and thinking okay then let's just leave it because um, it's not an old code that anybody recognizes nobody's going to say that they own it or anything like that and then um, as we all know um, Her Majesty she passed away um on the 8th of september um in 2022 this year and um and that day was a, it was it was a really really sad day um to be fair um i had an accident that day as well and so i just in general just wasn't feeling my best um and then um i think it was about a week or so later her Majesty was then moved. Um, she left Balmoral. She passed away in Scotland in Balmoral Castle. And the car that she was being driven away in, the registration number on the car, um, I was like, no. <laughs> and um, so because of the way that I was doing the code, which is still in my mind, I can't get rid of it. I see it all over the place. But the registration number of the car that the Queen was taken away from Balmoral Castle um, towards the airport and things like that. Um, if you actually did my code on it, it was it worked out to be exactly the same symbols. So the 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 because when I first found the symbols, I worked out that there was letters, um, and it worked out that that was exactly the same. I told my mum about it. My mum's like, it's just a coincidence. It's just because like that's just something that you're seeing because of what like what you've been doing. Um, but you just don't know, do you? You see, I could have had a message from beyond. Um, so um, I'm so as much as like I wanted to say something at the time, I was kind of thinking, oh, it's a bit disrespectful because she's only just passed away, and um, and we've got a new king and. But you know, I thought right now it's like there's a there's a chance to be able to just share that another little bit of my crazy man journey. <laughs> okay, so we're just coming up to the end of this now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just stop here because I can see that we've got these two little bits left. So realistically, so as you go when you do this one, 
Oh, I'm running out of time as well, so it's going to be quick. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41. So this last little bit, when we're working into the um, slip stitch at the end of the round as well, makes the 42. Whoops, a daisy. So we've got all of the 42 stitches and you slip stitch to finish at the end of the round. Okay, so in part two, I'll show you how to do the reductions. And you need to just make sure you just bend all over your work so it's the right way around. Okay, so thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for subscribing. Bye for now. See you in part two.